Welcome to Run Free and Strong, I'm Rayto. In this video, we'll review Garmin's recent updates to six key physiological features. There are game changers and will level up your running performance. There are several physiological metrics that Garmin either introduced or improved with its various 2024 software updates. These software updates are deployed automatically to more recent models of the Garmin running watches such as the Forerunner 965 and 955, Forerunner 265 and 255, Phoenix 7, Epix 2, and Enduro 2. The metrics are available on your watch, on the Garmin Connect mobile app, and on the Garmin Connect website. We'll cover VO2 max, lactate threshold, running power, training effect, training load, and HRV. The first three metrics measure our fitness level and ability to perform. The last three metrics measure our training effectiveness and load. We'll define each metric and how to integrate them with our training and racing to provide a contextualized, holistic view of our running performance. As far as their accuracy is concerned, Garmin uses technology solutions from FirstBeat Analytics, a Finnish physiological research and metrics company that Garmin acquired in 2020 and which are considered 95% accurate. Given the simplicity and cost advantage compared to expensive lab tests, 95% is good enough for me. Let's dive right in. VO2 max measures our maximum oxygen consumption during physical exercise and is a key indicator of aerobic fitness for runners and other endurance athletes. Garmin measures an activity with GPS and heart rate tracking and analyzes how hard our body's working to maintain pace by considering additional factors like terrain, altitude and temperature. It also considers runners background information gleaned from our work at history. U2 Max is displayed when an activity is saved. The ability to see our current fitness level and track changes over time is a game changer. It can help us set appropriate goals, evaluate progress, and determine the effectiveness of our training. It can also provide the motivation we need to keep going and to reach our goals. Our fitness level, measured in terms of VO2 max, combined with insight from our activity history, provide valuable contacts for training effect feedback, estimating recovery time, defining the optimal range for our weekly training load, and determining our current training status. For trail and ultra runners, Garmin now incorporates accelerator data in the VO2 max calculation to reflect the effect of ever-changing additions of trail running into the analysis of performance versus how hard our body is working. Lactate threshold or anaerobic threshold is a measure of a runner's ability to produce energy using fats and oxygen. It is therefore the single best determinant of our endurance performance capacity. Lactate threshold is the intensity level at which lactate builds up in our blood faster then our body can remove it, indicating the point where we can no longer sustain a high exercise intensity for long periods. Garmin analyzes our heart rate, pace, and heart rate variability, and the change in our respiratory rate. When the lactate threshold intensity is exceeded, the body's required oxygen consumption and lactate concentration will rise rapidly. This is reflected in the rapid rise in heart rate and respiratory frequency. The watch can then use this inflection point. The process of inhalation and exhalation produces tiny changes in the interval between heartbeats or HRV. Garmin can recognize the changes in our heart rate to indicate when we are performing above our lactate threshold. Lactate threshold is expressed in terms of pace, minutes per mile or minutes per kilometer, and the corresponding heart rate, or LTHR, and power in watts. First, we're able to establish more accurate training zones to improve performance because training will be based on real physiological state transitions of our body instead of arbitrary percentages of our maximum heart rate. We can also use our lactate threshold HR to configure our HR zones. When we set our zones using percent of LTHR, our lactate threshold marks the boundary between zone four and zone five. Many athletes find that this approach provides a more accurate framework for HR-based training and performance tracking. For example, we'll create training zones for base, tempo, threshold, speed, and anaerobic workouts. Many coaches, including Garmin Run Coach, use lactate threshold to design workout volume and intensity 
to target specific training outcomes. Running power determines the propulsive power applied to the road to gauge a runner's effort and is generally considered a more responsive and accurate metric of effort than heart rate. For years, elite cyclists have used power data as the most reliable way to measure their training. Garmin determines the running power by considering the major components of the work done during running from running dynamics, environmental factors, the runner's weight, and the density of air and acceleration due to gravity. Running power is calculated in watts and watts per kilogram of body weight. These components, how they change and the data used to compute them is shown in the following table. Running power together with lactate threshold are key indicators of running performance and endurance and therefore invaluable for training. Training with power is an alternative to heart rate and pace for four compelling reasons. One, power responds quickly to changes in effort, whereas heart rate falls behind and continues for a while after the activity ends. Two, power is consistent from session to session. Three, power takes into account environmental factors like hills and wind. And four, power doesn't depend on physiological factors such as hydration level or how well rested we are. Training effect provides insight into the effect of a workout on aerobic and anaerobic fitness. An aerobic training effect will improve VO2 max, and an anaerobic training effect will improve our ability for short bursts of intense running. Training effect is displayed on a five-point scale, from no effect to overreaching, is specific to each runner, and will provide additional feedback like improved aerobic fitness, or like enhanced anaerobic capacity. Garmin determines the training effect from heart rate, activity duration, and intensity of workout, with the latter calculated from excess post-activity oxygen consumption an indicator of recovery needs. The training effect is adjusted based on our running history and fitness level, so the same activity will not have the same effect for an elite runner as it would for us. The following table shows sample training effects. The training effect monitors the real-time value of a workout to gauge how much the activity is impacting our aerobic and anaerobic fitness levels. We're able to plan our training to improve both aerobic and anaerobic performance. This enables us to adjust our effort based on the score to avoid overtraining and to optimize our training gains. We'd like to share three sample track workouts to show how the volume, structure, and intensity of a workout results in different training effects. We're able to synthesize a cause and effect relationship and use that as input for future workouts. For an 8x400 workout, the short recoveries between the reps defined this as a lactate threshold workout and account for the high aerobic training effect. The anaerobic training effect is a result of the short repeats. Although the 200, 400, 200 workout doubled the recoveries compared to the 8x400 workout, we achieved an aerobic training effect by maintaining an elevated heart rate between the 200 reps with the walk and jog recoveries. Again, the anaerobic training effect is a result of the short repeats. Finally, the 3x1000 a 4x200 workout is a VO2 max workout and derives its aerobic training effect from longer repeats and maintain an elevated heart rate between the 200 reps. The anaerobic training effect, again, is the short repeats. Training load is a post-exercise based metric designed to help us understand the physiological impact and resulting recovery demands of our activities. Garmin provides views of our training load on a single activity basis or exercise load and as a combined physiological impact of recent activities or acute load. This later perspective is the key to effective training strategies. Garmin uses the excess post-exercise oxygen consumption to measure the amount of restorative and adaptive work our body needs to perform after an activity. The oxygen consumed is an indirect indicator of energy our body uses to recover, and Garmin compares the extra oxygen our body uses after workout compared to normal. While exercise load represents a single activity, acute load combines the impact over the past seven days and lessens the weight of any specific activity as these age over seven days. Monitoring training load enables us to optimize and balance training load to improve running performance and to analyze the physiological impact of a completed activity to understand the underlying efforts and what to expect it to contribute. The training load focus data screen provides us with a graphical depiction of how our training load is distributed among the three major intensity categories, 
high aerobic, low aerobic, and anaerobic, and quantitative feedback as well. When our training load is both optimal and balanced, it means we're active enough to support and gradually improve our fitness level. The composition of our activities is diverse enough to provide a solid foundation for future improvement. Garmin provides insight into how a run affects our training load focus as soon as we save our activity. A new color-coded label added to training effect summary screen describes our primary benefit of what we have just finished and where we can mostly expect it to contribute. Garmin uses heart rate variability as an indirect measure of stress. HRV is calculated as the degree of difference between different heartbeat intervals, which in turn is affected by the regulation of the nervous system. HRV is perfectly normal and healthy, but a low HRV may be an indicator of excessive stress. Garmin uses the optical heart rate sensor on the back of the watch to measure the time intervals between heartbeats while we sleep. This is only possible if we wear our Garmin during the night. Variations in pulse rate are used to calculate HRV and analyze to determine the average HRV for the sleep period. Another game changer, HRV provides a holistic view of overall health in a single metric and includes sleep, stress management, exercise, diet, and hydration. Together with the other physiological metrics we reviewed, HRV enables us to adapt training volume and intensity and adjust recovery to improve performance through restoration and adaptation and reduce injury risk. HRV is also critical to the determination of lactate threshold. We hope you found this video useful. Please give it a big like. If you're not already following our channel, click that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.